Hey everybody, welcome to 5 Years Ahead, I'm Brandon Kruger. Today I wanted to explain my take on this new 279 mile range Model Y. There's a lot of speculation and confusion around what batteries are going in this new model and why does it exist. The first question we need to answer is why would Tesla introduce a lower range and therefore cheaper Model Y now? With orders booked out through the rest of this year, Tesla has more than enough demand for the trim levels currently in production. They don't need to move down market to increase demand in the near future, so why make a cheaper model and reduce potential profit? The only reason that makes sense to me is the same reason they did it before with the Model 3. They want to start utilizing vehicle production capacity when they don't have sufficient cell supply. As I mentioned in my previous video on Tesla's battery supply, when Tesla was initially ramping Model 3 production, Tesla was not getting enough cells from Gigafactory Nevada to keep up with vehicle production. To remedy this and avoid bankruptcy, Tesla took two steps. One, they contracted an emergency supplementary supply of comparable 2170 cells from LG Chem, and two, they released a slightly cheaper mid-range rear-wheel drive model that was just a long-range rear-wheel drive model with less cells in the battery pack. I think the exact same scenario is playing out today. Tesla has a factory that's ready to start pumping out vehicles with 4680s, but 4680 production is not at a level that can keep Austin fully utilized using full-size battery packs as they may have originally intended. So now the question everyone's asking, what kind of battery pack is in this thing? As you might have already guessed, I'm pretty confident this will be using 4680s, not LFP or 2170s, as some have speculated. It would be fairly trivial for Tesla to build a Model Y with this range using 2170s, but I doubt they want to go back to building two different battery packs from 2170s since the standard range nickel pack was discontinued. While I doubt LFP can offer this level of range in an all-wheel drive Model Y today, I don't think it would be totally outside the realm of possibility for a structural BYD blade pack. Assuming this is using 4680s, let's take a look at some of the possible pack configurations. As far as we know, the Model Y structural battery pack is designed for 960 cells. Given the rumors of 98 watt hours per cell for initial 4680 production, a full pack would yield 94 kilowatt hours, of which 87 or 88 would likely be usable. This would make for a 380 plus mile range. With demand already high and cell supply restricted, it wouldn't make any sense to start building vehicles with the full 960 cells. With the mid-range Model 3, Tesla could just leave some empty space in the pack, but since this pack is structural, I think they will use some dummy cells in place of actual cells. These cell cans could be empty or filled with a phase change material. A phase change material filled cell would be especially interesting given what we know about the octavalve system. See this previous video if you don't know what I'm talking about. But phase change materials in EV battery packs is a topic for another video. When considering pack configuration, there's two main factors we need to consider, voltage and capacity. Voltage is determined by how many cells are placed in series. Up until recently, Tesla has used a 96S configuration on all of its vehicles. This gives you a maximum packed voltage of just over 400 volts. However, the Plaid S and X went to a 110S configuration, which ups maximum voltage to 462. Since Monroe Live's teardown of the Plaid S showed it used the same inverters as the 3 and Y, I wouldn't be surprised to see 4680 vehicles adopt a higher voltage as well eventually. But here we can see that even a 96S 9P pack, in which 10% of the cells would be dummy cells, would still yield an 85 kilowatt hour pack. For reference, the current long range model uses an 82 kilowatt hour pack. I'm suspecting this new mid-range all-wheel drive model is using a 96S7P configuration. I'll refer to this model as mid-range going forward because there is a standard range LFP Model Y being produced in China. This 96S7P would yield a 66 kilowatt hour pack with about 62 kilowatt hours usable, while requiring only 70% of the 960 cells. Now let's address some of the whatabouts. What about the efficiency? Shouldn't a 4680 vehicle have a much better efficiency than we see from the EPA filing? Well, yes, but we should have seen better efficiency from the mid-range Model 3 as well, but somehow it got worse. For more context, we'll compare this to other trims of Model Y. The current long-range model is rated for 330 miles and uses an 82 kilowatt hour pack, of which 76.5 kilowatt hours are usable. This gives us an actual efficiency of 232 watt hours per mile, while the EPA says 280 watt hours per mile. 
The standard range Model Y that existed for a very short time in the U.S. was rated for 244 miles and used a 55 kilowatt hour nickel pack with 51 kilowatt hours usable. That's an efficiency of 209 watt hours per mile, while the EPA said 260 watt hours per mile. I think this is probably the best efficiency we should ever expect to see from a Model Y. Since the standard range model had Tesla's smallest and lightest battery pack and no front motor, it was significantly lighter than other models, which enabled the higher efficiency. Therefore, I think this new Model Y's efficiency should slot somewhere in between that standard range model and the current long range model. And sure enough, if we plug in the 279 miles from a 66 kilowatt hour pack with 61 and a half kilowatt hours usable, we get 220 watt hours per mile. This would also be right in line with the standard range LFP Model Y offered in China. Its additional weight from the LFP battery is likely offset by the lack of front motor, which probably gives it a similar weight to this new model. Some people seem to be expecting 4680s to magically make Model Ys more efficient than the Model 3, but that's just not reasonable. It's impressive enough that this new model only consumes 11 watt hours per mile more than the standard range given it carries the additional weight of 11 kilowatt hours more battery and the front drive motor. Now what about the motor power? How can a smaller battery pack provide the same amount of power as a long range pack? The simple answer is, it probably doesn't. While the EPA filing does show the same motor power for this new mid-range all-wheel drive model as the current long range, all this proves is Tesla is using the same motors. If we look at the filings for the Model 3 mid-range compared to the long-range rear-wheel drive, they also showed identical motor power. However, the mid-range Model 3 didn't have the same power as the long-range rear-wheel drive. It was software limited because the smaller battery was unable to deliver as much current as the larger pack. I suspect the same thing is happening here. Tesla is using the motors they're already producing for the long-range and just limiting power in software. Now that I've made my case on what's under this new Model Y, Let's see how this could fit into the bigger plan. I think Tesla's plan with Austin is to initially only produce this new mid-range all-wheel drive trim until 4680 production ramps enough to handle demand for the performance model. At that point, probably later this year, I would expect Austin to produce the mid-range and performance while Fremont focuses on pumping out the long-range Y using 2170s. This would also be a case of Tesla repeating history in a way. A couple years ago, Panasonic started switching production lines at Gigafactory Nevada over to an improved chemistry. This bumped the long-range pack size up to 82 kilowatt hours from 77. However, since they couldn't just switch all the lines over at once, the transition had to be staggered. Tesla handled this by first deploying the upgraded chemistry on performance and standard range models, with long-range models switching over last. Therefore, I think we'll see the current long-range model continue to be produced with 2170s for quite some time still. Similarly, I think when Berlin starts 4680 production later this year, it will switch the performance model over first and the long-range probably next year. I don't anticipate any major changes with Fremont or Shanghai this year, just further improvements in production capacity using existing battery supply. Well that's my take on this new version of the Model Y. Let me know what you think in the comments below and hit the like button if you found this interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.